dear ones of Fredsville, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you for your invitation to celebrate 150 plus years of ministry at and through Fredsville Lutheran Church. I continue to praise God for you. It feels but yesterday that I was considering joining you in ministry. I had been told by the bishop's office that Fredsville was situated upon a beautiful wooded hill amidst an ocean of corn and soybeans. Dick Stamp, then president, called and invited me to interview. So Marcia, Anna, and I came to investigate. I remember sitting with the call committee in the fellowship hall, both parties working through another round of what may have seemed speed dating, asking and answering each other's questions, pondering a potential life together. Well, we did come together, and many would be the transitions that would unfold for us all in our years together. As for my family, my Marsha would set aside being an associate in ministry at the time in favor of a parenting sabbatical, as she called it. With your encouragement and welcome, Marsha spent precious time with our daughters, was welcomed into the life of the church, including the weekly studies and quilting sessions, and even went on to begin her studies toward her doctorate of ministry and eventual ordination to the ministry of word and sacrament. Our eldest daughter, Anna, still a baby when we first came to you, would start school at Dyke, the same school we later discovered her great-great-grandmother had attended years before. Our daughter, Sarah, would be born, baptized, and learn first steps in your midst. I cherish memories of Anne Reineke, Bernice Craig, and others helping Marsha with our girls during worship. Jack and Mary Mommer donating fencing from one of their properties to place around the parsonage backyard as security for our girls from running out into the corn. And Arlen and Carol Anderson and Eric and Darla Anderson inviting us to pick sweet corn from the field out back as we wanted. You all welcomed us into your lives, your homes, your hearts, and cared for us. Thank you. And how would Fredsville be blessed? Well, together we moved from a time of sensitive grief and pain to sensing once again a future where our Lord's abundant life could be lived. What blessing and privilege to be your pastor during those years. We began with an every member visit, or as close as one can get to such things. Barb Chapman was my secretary at the time, and I gave her my calendar to schedule the home visits. She proceeded with spirit-led discernment as she set those connections over the opening weeks, months, and years of my pastorate. I was privileged to hear firsthand your stories, your griefs, your joys, and your hopes. We would heal and unify and dream once again as we grew to the point of even adding a youth director position to our staff. Shonda Van Riesen was the first coming to us from tent makers. What a gift that was for our youth and young families. You would use your many and varied spiritual gifts in the planning and doing of our ministries together. From musicians, to teachers, to coaches, to farmers, to shop workers, to homemakers, to plumbers, to sheriff deputies, to engineers, and a whole lot more, you share Jesus' incredible love and peace through your giftings. Fredsville lived up to its name. We held each other in the midst of challenges, sicknesses, dying, and death. We depended on the hope of Jesus' resurrection that even breaks into the here and now, and we celebrated its weighty reality. Together, we took lead in our conference congregations, coordinating and conducting workshops and other resources for all to grow in ministry. On a lighter note, you even connected me to some of my Danish roots. Yes, my spit sample sent to 23andMe would later reveal I'm not just Norwegian in ancestry after all. And so with fondness, I remember dancing around the Christmas tree in the fellowship hall, singing New Harvey Uligen, and hosting our annual Abelskiver dinners, serving more than 800 people, as I recall, with Abelskiver frying stations extending from the church kitchen all the way to the parsonage garage. Together, the Happy Danes rejoiced and enjoyed tasty tradition. 
new things were introduced as well. A new organ and handbells come to mind, the latter starting with a three-octave set loaned from my mother and sister. Jean Loger, Joanne Jewell, Jeannie Tucson, and many more led us instrumentally and vocally. Did you realize how blessed we were to share together God's praises in such powerful musical ways? And well, I'd like to lift up many, many more dear ones. I'll highlight our dear sister and sexton, Emily Stagey, with her sweet, loving smile that lit up her eyes with tenderness. During our planning meetings for Sunday School or VBS, we'd wonder if Emily would, meet, would, would mine some glitter or other mess during upcoming teaching times. But there was no need to fret. Emily loved the children and didn't mind any cleanup in the service of their knowing Jesus. I also recall a time when I caught Emily atop an extension ladder in the church's northeast entryway, em Emily's typical entrance from her sexton's house. She had spotted some cobwebs up high. So at 85 years of age, she ventured up with dust rag in hand. I gently scolded her for doing something that another could easily do for her. And of course, she took me at my word, later sending a dust rag up the ladder with me to dust the sanctuary cross as I placed the black veil there for Good Friday. Truth be told, the best gift we could have gotten her was a hydraulic lift that could have zipped her into all those hard-to-reach crevices. What a dear one. What a blessing to Fredsville and to me and my family she was. There are so many more people, memories and stories I'd like to share. Whether I've mentioned you or not in this greeting, know that I cherish our time together. Six short years in length, but profound upon my life. With a desire to get closer to aging parents struggling with dementia, I accepted a call to First Lutheran Church in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, leaving Iowa behind physically, but never leaving it in my heart. We went on to minister 10 years in Manitowoc, followed by 13 plus years here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Nagani, Michigan, we're up here where the snow is high. My Marcia got her doctorate of ministry from Luther Seminary and following ordination would serve as pastor with me both in Manitowoc and Nagani. In the first year of moving here though to Nagani, Marcia began her battle with ovarian cancer and died eight years later. Words cannot express how deeply I miss her. As for my other dear women, well, this year there will be two more graduations in the Solberg household. Anna will complete her PhD from Kent State University in human geography. And Sarah, her Master of Fine Arts degree in creative writing from Northern Michigan University. I await their next steps in life. In closing, I'll share one more story. Now, I suppose I could opt for a funny one, like the Sunday of my Sarah's baptism, when someone saw a snake's tail extending down from one of the sanctuary light fixtures. Had they imagined it? Well, no. The snake came visiting our secretary on Monday. Rather, I think I'll share with you a story that profoundly shared the meaning of Fredsville with me. It was from our confirmation ministry. In those days, we used the Faith Incubator Confirmation Model, gathering on Wednesday evenings in the sanctuary for large group teaching time, newsprint for cartooning, taped on front, uh, vertically extended eight-foot tables there before the altar. We'd also gather in small group conversations for check-in and, and prayer. Well, a day or so before one of those Wednesday evenings, I received a visit from one of our confirmants and her mother in my study. Slowly, that dear preteen shared with me her story. At school, she had been a victim of bullying. Furthermore, it had come from some girls who were with her in confirmation, some in her small group, some in another. Well, my response, I shared Matthew 18 with her. 
inviting her to consider Jesus' invitation and Jesus' command to go face to face in conversation with those girls, even doing so in confirmation small group time that following Wednesday night. <laughs> To my surprise, that young, incredibly brave girl, that dear sister in Christ, agreed. And so it was on Wednesday night, I gathered two of our girls' small groups together for a time of mutual, honest, sharing, naming, challenging, confessing, and granting of absolution. Each took time to hear and see the other's perspective. Following mutual confession, they pronounced forgiveness to each other in Jesus' name. And we established healthy next steps of caring support and check-in. By night's end, I was moved to tears as I watched that dear, brave, preteen and the other girls, repentant sisters in Christ, go to our baptismal font together. Fingers were dipped into the water for the etching of Christ's cross upon each other's foreheads, blessings and hugs shared one with another. This is Fredsville, I thought. This is who we are. Yes, there are real troubles in the world, in our lives, sometimes even in our relationships, but we are Fredsville, a place of Christ's own peaceful rest. Dear ones, I praise God for all of you as Fredsville, continuing to share through 150 plus years Christ's peace and rest. Thanks be to God. Bless you.